we're going to be taking a look today at the simple past using German strong verbs. Um, as usual, we will begin our lecture with an example in English before uh, moving over into a very brief discussion of when do we use the simple past in German. And then we're going to dive right into forming the simple past using two strong verbs, fahren to drive and stehen to stand. Both these verbs uh, reveal or show, or show specific ways that we can use the simple past with strong verbs in German. Between our discussion of these two verbs, we're going to briefly highlight the slight differences in the conjugation pattern between weak and irregular verbs and German strong verbs. So, what is the simple past? When do we use it? So, as I've mentioned in other presentations, uh, the simple past is a one verb uh, construction that talks about events in the past that either happened habitually, so for instance, I rode the bus to work every day, or a single event. I rode the bus to work and that was it. I never went to work again. Or it could also describe a state of being. I knew what to do. Um, the main idea is that it's a one verb. Uh, it's a one verb construction. It's not saying I have ridden the bus to work or I have known what to do. Both of which require the use of a helping verb to have. But it uses uh, one verb: rode or knew. So, when do we use it? The Simple past is, using, is used primarily in, with written narrative, so I've seen it quite frequently in books and newspapers. Uh, Grimm's fairy tales, German fairy tales, uh, use the simple past um, exclusively. Um, the Bible is written with, in the simple past. Um, it is, however, used less in spoken German. It's used primarily in narrative. Some forms, however, are used rather frequently in spoken German, and these are what I tell my students are the high-frequency verbs, such as have, uh, haben, uh, sein, to be, and the modal verbs. So. Um, there are basically three ways to form the simple past in German. Um, there's weak verbs, irregular verbs, and strong verbs. Today we're going to be looking just at strong verbs, and if you have questions about how to form the simple past to weak or irregular verbs, I refer you to the other videos that are on our, our YouTube channel. So, with the simple past of strong verbs, uh, we need to know our four principal parts of our verbs. Uh, these are found in the back of any German textbook or could be online. And essentially, we, ha uh, as you see here on the screen, we have fahren, fährt, fuhr, gefahren. And it's the infinitive. It's the third person singular present tense. Uh, the simple past, fuhr, and the past participle, gefahren. So to form the simple past, we are going to focus specifically on the third principal part, the simple past, fuhr. So we take fuhr as the, the simple past stem, if you will, and notice that unlike the uh, irregular verbs and the weak verbs, where we have to add a simple past tense marker, which is a simply a te construction, uh, we don't have that in the strong verbs. So. Uh, we simply take the simple past uh, stem and run it through the conjugation pattern. Uh, ich fuhr, du fuhrst, er sie es fuhr, fuhren, fuhrt, fuhren. So we simply add an ending. So uh, again, a uh, zoom in on the on the simple past of fahren. Ich fuhr, du fuhrst, er sie es fuhr, wir fuhren, ihr fuhrt, sie fuhren. Now you'll notice, if you look at the conjugation pattern, that it is slightly different than the irregular and weak conjugation patterns that we have been looking up to this time. Specifically, the difference is going to be in the uh, first person and third person plural, whereas in the uh, 
whereas in the weak verb conjugation pattern, we simply add an N in the first and third person plural. In uh, strong verbs, we have to add an EN. So now if we have, however, a verb that has a um, stem, a simple past stem ending that ends in a D, a T, or a S. For instance, if we have something like stehen, steht, stand, gestand, and the simple past ends in a D. And if we proceed with the same type of uh, pattern or workflow that we've been using with our, with fahren, that will present us some pronunciation difficulties. So, in order to, to solve this problem, uh, we take the simple past stem and if it ends in a D, a T, or an S, and if we want to do the second person singular or plural, we're going to have to insert an E before we add the ending. So, stehen, stand, stand, du standest. So, this, however, is, is going to not going to be the case if we have a uh, if we're not going to conjugate the uh, second person singular or plural. Everything else is going to be essentially the same. So via standen, we don't have to insert an extra e. So to summarize, um, here's the uh, close up of the uh, of the of the verb. Uh, stehen in the simple past. Ich stand, du standest, er sie es stand, wir standen, ihr standet, sie standen. Alright, and that's the simple past using German strong verbs.